this is Chris the Nightmare Ariola, and you're watching Mission Boxing Today on YouTube. Heavyweight boxing fans, what's the deal? So, when it comes to Deontay Wilder, man, my assessment starts, I want to say 2010. It's really when my assessment started. I remember seeing a fight or two or some highlights from him in the Olympics. Really didn't think too much of it, you know. Um, but, you know, my assessment starts around about the summer of 2010, somewhere in there. Deontay Wilder had to be like 10-0, and 11-0, something like that. I just saw a big, tall guy. You know, I knew he was an Olympian that uh, picked up boxing kind of late. Um, tall guy with, uh, you know, long reach. You know what I mean? He had to be been like 10 or 11 and 0, somewhere around there. And I, I remember I used to be in the, um, I used to always be on uh, eastsideboxing.com. And I used to always be in the uh, the forums. And we would talk about boxing at that time. And, you know, that was the time that the Klitschko's were pretty much just running the sport. And uh, But, you know, we were talking about some of the up-and-coming guys. And while there was a guy where I really didn't know what to think of him. I remember I used to be in that forum, them chat forums. And I remember we used to be like, man, maybe he should go to cruiserweight. He may be a better cruiserweight because he turned pro, I think, like under 210 pounds. And some of you may say, well, Evander Holyfield was a little, was a small heavyweight. Yeah, but Evander Holyfield wasn't six foot seven. <laughs> you know what I mean? Deontay Wilder's tall as hell, man. So, you know, and, I, and it's it's funny thinking about it now. You rewind or you fast forward. I'm sorry. Sorry. Six years later, now he has the WBC title. But I tell people sometimes, man, back in 2010, I don't know if just people don't remember or, you know, now if you're from Alabama or you've been following Deontay Wilder since he was an amateur or something, well, maybe your mindset is different. But just from a, you know, my point of view as a fan, I remember, I didn't know what to think of the guy when I first seen him. So, you know, when I seen him go into a fight with uh, Malik Scott, I thought Malik Scott was going to win. Not because I hate Deontay Wilder, remember. My assessment of him goes back to 2010, not this Meldonium Pavekin shit like some of you. My, you know, I go back to 2010 when I think of Deontay Wilder. Some of you may go back to the Olympics with him, you know what I mean? But I really didn't know what to think of the guy, you know, and to me, he, you know, he had all these knockouts, consecutive knockout streaks, and I've seen the, the highlights of him. And I've seen the highlights of him, and, um, I, you know, I... Yes, he was knocking guys down coming forward, but but again, he's a six foot seven, two hundred, you know, at that time, ten pound knockout puncher. You know, I I just, you know, because usually when you think of six seven, you think two fifty right off the top. Even guys at around six 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 five, six four, you think at least two forty, two fifty. You know what I mean? So it was weird seeing a, you know, a skinnier guy get knockouts. Now, Tommy Hearns, you know, guys like that who was tall, skinny guys at lower weight classes, but at the heavyweights though. It just looked odd watching a guy, you know, under 210 pounds get these knockouts like this, although against limited opposition. So, again, like I said, with the uh, Malik Scott fight, I'm thinking to myself, like, well, Malik Scott has skills, man. Like, you watch these guys train, and I know you can't win a fight based on what guys look like in training. But you go watch Malik Scott uh, train and do and shadow box and uh, get in the ring and work the mitts. Look how sharp he is. Look look how fundamentally sound he is. Look how he moves his head. You just, from the eye test of that, you would think, dude, there's no way. Or, you know, Deontay Wilder can possibly win it, but if he doesn't get the knockout quick, there's no way he's going to beat Malik Scott going into rounds 8, 9, 10. That was my mindset, just based on what I've seen from Wilder. He didn't look like the technically the most technical guy, you know what I mean? And, and at that time, he didn't seem like he was really using his jab the way he should be, the way he uses it now. And I didn't think he had any type of back foot game. I just didn't think it was there. Then I seen highlights of him uh, as an amateur when he went over to Russia and he fought in some tournament. He got knocked down. Legs was all over the place. You know what I mean? So Wilder has grown on me, man. He has gotten better. And it's weird. Sometimes people think I'm too hard on Wilder. You know, some people think I give him too much credit. So, you know, it's kind of weird on my channel sometimes. Either they don't think I give him enough credit or people think I give him too much credit. But to me, he has grown on me, man. And he, to me, he has proven me wrong against Malik. I don't care what the bet nods say, but against Malik Scott, I thought he was going to lose. Then I was like, okay, you know, but then he'll have a performance against Malik Scott. And then we know what happened in the fight. Some people thought Scott laid down, but I thought Scott was going to win, period. Okay. Then we have a, then he will have a performance like the one he had against Jason Gavin. And then you're back to thinking like, uh, you're, you know, you're scratching your head again. Cause he looks kind of, 
awkward a little bit and his footwork doesn't look all that great. You know, it, then he really couldn't uh, land on Gavin at first. You know, then, you know, you'll start thinking that again. Then you'll see him against Lyakovich where he damn near made him have a, have a seizure. You know what I mean? Then you'll start thinking, okay, maybe he can do something. Kelvin Price was a fight I was uh, I thought was a good fight for him. Um, but the Malik Scott fight, he proved me wrong. And the Stavern fight, I picked him in the Stavern. I don't care what the bet nods say. He proved me wrong in that fight. Because I figure, like, man, once Stavern uh, pushes him back, Deontay Wilder doesn't have no back foot game. And, it, and it's leaky, and he's, you know, uh, putting his hands out. You know how Deontay Wilder put his hands up in the air, then he'll scoot back with his chin exposed. I was just thinking to myself going into that fight, like, man, Stavern's going to catch his ass in an exchange with a short hook mid-range and knock him out. But what happened? Deontay Wilder proved me wrong. That's why I give him so much credit because for me as a fan, when I look at him from 2010, when I was in them chat forums talking about me and other guys talking about he should maybe fall down a cruiserweight. He's a WBC title holder and he's proved me wrong, man. So he is getting a lot better. So when I look at Spilka and Molina and Duopa and uh, guys like that, he's fighting Ariola. Ar those guys are a lot better than the Jason Gavrins, the Lyakovich, you know, older Lyakovich and uh, Fertha and all those guys. Those guys are a lot better than, you know, what I mean, the Gavrins and all that type of shit. So to me, solid opposition. And he's, he's showing me that he has more in his toolbox, man. Deontay Wilder has come a long way in my eyes. Now, for some of you fans out there, yes, I know he hasn't fought Pavekin yet. He hasn't fought Ortiz. He hasn't fought Tyson Fury. He hasn't fought Vladimir Klitschko. He hasn't fought Anthony Joshua. I know that. I know that. But I'm just saying as far as his progression, he has progressed leaps and bounds in my opinion, man. Especially with that back foot game. He's uh, learning how to throw that jab and be more effective with it. He's gradually putting on weight so he can be more solid at six foot seven. Um, it's one thing, you know, like I said, when you're Holyfield and you're 6'2 and you weigh 210 pounds, it's another thing when you're 6'7, 6'8, you know what I mean? It just, you want to look, you want to be a little bit more solid than that, you know what I mean? And so that's my opinion about that. So my assessment of Deontay Wilder, I don't think I give him too much credit and I don't think I dog him out. I think I give him the proper amount of credit, man. He is somebody that has proven me wrong. Again, my assessment started years ago. Not when the, Mo, the uh, Meldonium situation happened and all that. No, 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 no. I, I, I've been watching them for a while, man. And again, like I said, back in 2009, 2010, I don't know what to think of this guy. Man, a dude, you know, I really know what to think of him. You know, but uh, he's, he's showing me that he can do different things. So now, since he has beaten these levels of guys that he's beaten, Spilka and the Molinas and Duopas, now I need to see how he performs against the creme de la creme, the top of the top, right? The Klitschko's and Fury beat Klitsch, you know, those guys, Pavekin and uh, Ortiz, guys who are looked at, at least at least viewed as the top of the top, right? The top five type of guys. So now I want to see what he does against those guys. That's why I'm not in a rush for him to have another voluntary de uh, defense when he comes back against Travis Kaufman. And, and I bring up Travis Kaufman because Travis Kaufman himself, you can look it up, you can Google it himself said that uh he's in line somehow some way for a Deontay Wilder fight when Wilder comes back you know what I mean um even Jarrell Miller has been throwing Wilder's name out there and I've done a lot of videos on it because I think it's hilarious you know what I mean that they go back and forth I like it and you know Miller's an up-and-coming guy too he needs to be taken seriously he's rated by I believe all the sanctioning bodies you know what I mean so I throw his name out there and Gerald Washington and guys like that I don't mind if he fights those guys. I mean, if it comes down to it, that's fine. But I want to see how he performs against the other guys. And I'm going to give Wilder um, a chance to beat everybody, man. Like I said, I think when it's all said and done and the smoke clears, I think the mega fight with the top two guys, when it's all said and done, is going to be between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. That's how much Wilder has progressed in my eyes. So I don't think I lowball uh Deontay Wilder man I, and I don't think I give him more credit than he's than he deserves the guy has proven me wrong I, I don't know if he's proven you wrong yet but he's proven me wrong twice I thought Stavern was going to be him because I thought his bat foot game was non-existent and I thought Stavern to press him get him against the ropes and catch that chin sticking out and 
all the shit that Wilder does defensively, that he has holes and gaps. I thought uh, Stavern would take advantage. He couldn't. Wilder kept that jab in his face and that right hand coming down the middle of the pipe. He couldn't do nothing, right? And then the Malik Scott fight, we know what happened with that. So to me, and then with his fights against Spilka and Duopa and all these other guys, those are good fights for him to get better. You know what I mean? Now I want to see him against the other guys where I can really say, okay, this is his place in this era of the new heavyweights. Just my opinion on this. I've been wanting to do this type of video, man, because sometimes people think, you know, like I know I keep saying it, but I think I give Wilder his proper respect, man. Just my opinion on this. Let me know what you think. How do you feel about Deontay Wilder? I'm out.